Hi, Patreon. How are we doing? We'll be getting started just in a couple of minutes as Dragos joins me on the call. I'm very excited today to uh, see you guys here as well as uh, have Dragos join us on the call. So just give me a couple of seconds as well I bring him on. All right, Dragos, can you hear me? Hey guys, yes, I can hear you, Richard. Awesome. We had a little technical glitches earlier as we tried to start this call because so many people just wanted to join. I think it crashed Zoom. So I'm glad that we were able to get started. It's a, again, it's very exciting to see you here today joining us for the fourth webinar in our series. And today we're going to be very fortunate to see you actually go through a live demo of Archbee and we will open up the floor for our viewers to ask you questions. Uh, we already have a lot of people interested in the product. I saw a lot of positive comments of people uh, saying that it's a beautiful interface. It's a beautiful UI. They tried the demo accounts already. They can't wait to get started. So for those of you guys who are joining us, if you're on the call right now, the product is going to be live during this uh, live demo. So you can even download, uh, get started with your account right now, purchase a code uh, and walk through the entire system alongside Drago. So if you actually bump into something that you don't know how to do, you can ask him live here on the call and he can walk you through that process right away. So does that sound like a good plan, Dragos? That's perfect for me. <laughs> awesome. So I'll let you take over uh, the call and I'll field all the questions to you as they come in. Awesome. So thanks for having me here. I'm stoked and super excited to be launching RHB with PitchGround with you guys, with the whole community. Uh, RHB is a documentation system that's very fast and very flexible. And you can use it in multiple ways. Uh, you can use it to build a team wiki. You can use it to build a knowledge base for your customers. You can use it to build great project documentation and even technical documentation. You can use it to even take notes for yourself and share with your team in whatever position you are in your company, from QAs to developers to project managers to executives like CEO and CMO. You can use this software to make the flow better in your company and go forward faster than you would regularly uh, be able to. So am I, able, am I able to share the screen here? I think I am. Yep, you can share the screen. I think it's better to just get, just get started and walk you through the whole onboarding and uh, show you through the whole app. Is that okay with everybody? Awesome, let's do it. Sure. So let's go to sign up. I'm regular, I'm uh, logged in with my account, but uh, let's go to sign up and create a new account. Uh, we'll see how easy it is and uh, how easy it, it actually is to create and structure your knowledge with your team. Uh, let's enter some password here. This is the onboarding uh, where it just asks you for a couple of small information about yourself uh let's say we are jane musk and we are a cmo and we're working at tesla ai and here optionally we can also invite other users to our workspace let's just do that for the sake of posterity see how it looks like you can also change your photo right in here i'm not going to do it right now but this is how it looks like so you see it's like 20 seconds to just create an account and get started. Uh, this is basically the main screen of the app. And what you can see here is the, are the three panels. Uh, in the black here are, are the spaces. And the second column are, are the document trees, which uh, are tied up to each space. And in the right, you'll see uh, the documents it, itself so and the document content. I'm gonna log out of this account because I have, uh, I'm gonna show you my own workspace, which is populated with lots of content that we are currently using. So uh, it 
it's going to be a lot easier to show you the full power of the software uh, by doing that. So just let's just log out and I'll log in with my own software, uh, with my own account, sorry. Okay. So like I was saying, uh, it's, it's a three panel uh, app uh, in the left you see the spaces which are uh, the biggest form of organizing and structuring your content. And they also serve a different purpose, but I'm gonna talk about that a bit later. The second panel are uh, the documents and uh, they are called document trees because they are very, very flexible. And you can see here a very flat document tree, but if we go to another uh, space, you can see that you can actually rearrange them in any way you, you deem possible just by dragging and dropping them, uh, creating child documents and creating main documents. And everything is real fast and real time. Uh, if you have, uh, let's say a team that is, that's working on different sides, side, uh, sides of the globe, you're never gonna have to uh, merge stuff manually because uh, everything is syncing in real time and uh, automatically merging everything your team is doing. So this is the document tree. Like I said, it's very flexible. Let, let me move this back. Uh, and what you see here on the right uh, is the document content. Let's uh, start with showing you some regular text and formatting and uh, cool stuff that you can add in here. For example, this is one of the blog posts that I uh, wrote when I was launching the company um, almost nine months back. So I was writing about AWS and as you can see here, it's, it has great formatting and uh, lots of options like images and, and even videos and links and stuff like that. It's uh, very easy to edit stuff. Uh, you just select stuff and uh, uh, for example uh, format it in any way you want. Uh, the editor is very fast. For example, if you want to start a list, you just type one and the list is started. Oh wow, that's nice. The same with dashes. Uh, the same with checklists. You can also add all the stuff from the inline menu here. And as you can see, we have a bunch of uh, advanced widgets that you can use to document stuff for your self or for your company. I'm gonna go uh, into each one of these uh, turn by turn, but here I just wanted to see the power. I just wanted you to see the power of uh, how text can be formatted and how fast the whole experience is. We even have markdown shortcuts. For example, if you're uh, an engineer and familiar with markdown, you can just write uh, markdown shortcuts like uh, uh, triple dash and you're gonna be able to start headings just by that. So that was a he uh, heading one, this is a heading two and just writing three of them is gonna be a heading three. You can also start block quotes with uh, in uh, editor shortcuts, this is very nice and very fast to edit. Uh, now engineers are not gonna have any reason to not document because the experience is very fast and very enjoyable. So Dragos, I have a quick question. Uh, so with, yeah. this question, uh, with this layout, is it automatically saved as you type? Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's a real time system. So you're never gonna have to click save uh, and in the meantime, maybe somebody else edited the same document and you're never gonna see the conflict because it all happens in real time. It's so, like Google Docs okay. in, so, in that sense. So it'll actually show um, someone's username typing as they're going through this article, correct? Uh, yes, it is gonna show it. Uh, you're gonna see the people here uh, yeah. that are contributing. Uh, we still don't have uh, exactly where they're typing but the sync works very, very well. Okay, cool. So this was the basic text. You can also add tags to your content and subscribe to changes if you're particularly interested in that stuff. You can also share uh, that document with the, even with the outside world or you can make it private uh, for nobody else can see it but yourself. For example, the my notes and drafts this is a private space for only you. Nobody's gonna be able to access it, not even your team. This is the space where you can draft stuff and structure your ideas before presenting them to the to your team. So can you move items from this uh, private repository onto a public one? 
Yes, you can. You just drag and drop them. Oh, that's it. It's so simple. That's it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> like I said, it's very, very fast. I'm an engineer myself and I hate slow software. So everything you, you're going to see here is going to be really, really fast and uh, enjoyable to, to do. Uh, it's not going to get in your, in your way in, in, in uh, any way possible. We're, we're trying to make the, the best experience that we, can, that we can provide. And this works for any, any document. You just drag and drop them in any in the, in the same space and rearrange them sounds good yeah so let's continue uh, because i was in the demo docs here uh, so we've talked a bit about the text editing and the markdown and the uh, formatting capabilities of the software but it's not just only that this is what most software on the market is already offering what I've showed you so far. We have way, we have taken like five steps further to make sure your team has everything they need to document stuff because documentation is not only text and it's not only images and videos and lists. It's more than that. It might be diagrams, for example. What you see here is the software architecture diagram for ArchB. This is our internal uh, architecture on how we have built our software. So this is a real-time diagram. It's not made in another system. It's native to ArchB. Uh, everything here is uh, made in ArchB. And let me show you the, the full power of the, of the diagram because you're never gonna have to look out for these icons and drag them or input them in our software because you can always search for stuff in here. And we have a bunch of uh, components, over 100,000 components that you can use. Uh, that's software as a service, uh, APIs, open source libraries, cloud, uh, anything. You can basically, you can find anything in here from WordPress to libraries, SaaS, Company. You, you also have these uh, regular boxes that you can use text and these shapes and these groups. Uh, Jagos, I'm actually losing your audio. Okay. That's weird because I have a very good internet. Uh, is uh, Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's better now. Sure. So this is one of the forms of other types of documentation, but we also have lots more types of documentation. For example, your engineers might uh, want to have a code editor that they can write in multiple languages and have autocomplete and syntax highlighting and stuff like that. You can also have change logs. For example, where for companies that are shipping software, it's very important for them to keep track of the changes that have been made from version to version. Uh, for example, when, uh, on a 2112 uh, to 2113, we've added the ability for, to foresee the future. So uh, we actually know how uh, the coronavirus virus thing is going to end with our software. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's sometime soon because it's, yeah, it's, very soon. it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there was a, a small pun and joke. Um, so these are uh, change logs. These are, uh, we call them callouts and you can set callouts to be uh, success or info or warning or danger. Uh, it's very easy to rearrange stuff in the editor. What else? You can also link uh, other documents in your uh, in your current documents, you just write at, and in the list here, you're gonna see a bunch of people that you can mention, but also you can see a lot of documents. We don't load all the documents, but you can just write stuff like AWS and the, uh, the, the, the system is gonna bring up everything in your workspace so you can link it together if you want to. This is a great way to onboard your people. For example, when a new employee is coming on board, uh, 
he will have a flow by going through all these all this documentation that you and your team have written before and uh, basically this shortens up the, the time to onboard new people for example uh, if before it would take two months maybe now it would take three to four weeks or something like that we have seen this uh, across a bunch of uh, our customers when they have a good knowledge base people onboard faster because they're not afraid to ask questions and because they don't actually need to uh, most of the knowledge they need to get started on the job is already written in this workspace. Okay. So let's go on because like I said, we have a bunch of widgets that uh, fulfill a bunch of needs that are not only text. For example, you can see here, we have these uh, Kanban boards or mini Trellos or, or mini taskers, how we, how we call them. You mm -hmm. can just create them and drag and drop them from one column to another column. You can create new columns and add stuff to them too. You can delete them, you can rename them. And we also have maps. Maybe you, you want to uh, uh, let uh, people know that maybe this is one data center, this is one, this is one. It all works flawlessly. So let's go on to other stuff like API documentation because this is one of the uh, greater needs of engineers. Oh, before we get into that, we actually have a question from Frank. He wants to know, is, is there a file section for each space? Hi, Frank. Uh, so there is no file section for each space, but that's a great idea. So somebody else, I, it might be you, I think. Somebody else uh, let us know on our in-app chat that they would lo love this feature. And it, it, it totally makes sense we're going to build this. Uh, so each space is going to have a small... Uh, section here where you're going to be able to see the whole documents that were uploaded here. That's a great suggestion. Thank you for it. Cool. Hope that answers your question, Frank. Keep them coming. Yeah. So technical documentation. API docs are the most important part of it because API, your, your company is going to offer an API either to one of your teams that are working on the app or on the front end or to your customers where they might need to integrate with your API. So we have this uh, cool in-house widget that lets you describe an API with uh, anything you can think of. You can add path parameters, query, headers, uh, also for requests or for responses. You can just uh, pick what uh, HTTP status codes we have here. And this is for individual APIs, but we also have uh, standard and open implementations of uh, APIs like, uh, let me drag this here. We have a uh, Swagger integration where you just point, uh, you just point something to your swagger.json and it generates a whole interface that you can play around with. This is the infamous pet store implemented with Swagger and we're pointing directly, directly to it. So how, how did we add this stuff in here? It's very simple. You go to a new row and you just add the Swagger UI in here. So it's already a pre-built widget. Yeah, this is a pre-built widget and you just point to your Swagger JSON and that's it. You can also host the Swagger JSON uh, with our platform. You just upload the file with it and that's it. You point it. So I'm gonna delete this because it's a demo doc. We also have newer stuff like GraphQL. GraphQL is, a, is also an open standard for, for building APIs, which is a bit newer and not, uh, not many people have adopted it, but it's great and we had to do this. So uh, this is pointing right now to uh, let me see what's going on here, but and let's add, so we have also shortcuts in the, in the editor. For example, when you write graph GQL is gonna add one of this really fast. When you type diagram, it's gonna add a diagram really fast so that you never have to reach for the mouse again. You have a, a continuous uh, writing experience. So this is the GraphQL and you can query the API. We have a demo API at API slash GraphQL 
that uh, returns uh, status and a bunch of people. This is amazing. Uh, we also have a bunch of, sorry? But do you have a, like a shortcut um, FAQ where people can learn what all these shortcuts are? It is. Uh, so when you hit control or command forward slash, you can see the whole uh, shortcuts in here. You can also find it here at this uh, question mark. You can also see the keyboard shortcuts. It's going to take you to the same menu. Nice. So we have shortcuts for almost anything. The editing experience is going to be very nice and very continuous. For stuff that we don't do in-house, uh, we also have integrations with the outside world. So you're never going to have to uh, suffer because uh, stuff is not integrated. We have integrations with design tools uh, like Marvel, like uh, Envision, like uh, Figma, like uh, Trello for project management, Airtable for uh, stuff like Google Sheets. This, so this is an embedding of an Airtable. But we're also going to have something similar uh, in-house very soon. We're working on having these complex data tables in the software itself so you never have to pay for Airtable or uh, external stuff again. Lucy chart, even though we have internal diagrams, we also integrate with uh, Lucy chart and draw.io because uh, some uh, companies also have this already in place and they just wanted to see here uh, diagrams. GitHub and lots, lots more integrations. If you go to archbeat.io and go to slash integrations, it's also here in the menu. You can see a bunch of integrations that we have with very popular software as a service today. From Airtable to Slack to Typeform to Prezi, Miro, Lucy Chart, design tools like Envision, Figma, Abstract, uh, even uh, stuff for marketing like Google Analytics and Intercom for public spaces. So just go to slash integrations and you're going to see all this. Um, so we talked about the editor so far. And as you can see here, you can also focus when you don't want to see all this stuff, you can focus on the writing process. But we also have the chat. So when you look here uh, in the chat section, sorry about that, you're going to see uh, that you can also chat in the context of documents. Nice. You can also mention people. You can say uh, at here. And you can say, oh, Sarah Lockheed, uh, what is uh, AWS? Maybe you didn't understand from the content. You can see the, the people that contributed to this document here. So you, you know who to ask. If so uh, something. Will she get an email notification? Or will it be like within this app, she'll get a notification? It's a notification within the app. And if the Slack integration is on, you're going to get the. Uh, a Slack notification too. We are not big fans of sending emails, but we're gonna see if more people ask for sending emails on uh, mentions, uh, we're gonna probably do that. But for now, uh, we are trying to keep everything outside of email because we've noticed a big part of people think email is very unproductive and they would like to stay out of it. Right. It might be, uh, be even uh, uh, configurable. You might be able soon to go to your account settings and select which kind of no notifications you want to receive, which is, I think, the, the best uh, compromise here. So in addition to that, when you look at this chat, this is not the regular chat. We implemented this in-house because we wanted for you to be able to comment on chunks of the document. So. When you select a block in the document, you just mention this block in the new dog message. And uh, so something I'm doing wrong. Here. So maybe you, you want to uh, select something about this doc, uh, about this block. And you just, uh, as you see, it's referenced here. Oh, and wow. you, can, uh, you can add people and ask them something about that particular block. This doesn't only work with uh, these regular blocks, it also works with 
uh, any type of widget that I showed you before. For example, let's uh, mention this uh, change log. So the change logs are, are able to be referenced to in this chat. So the same, you might be able to ask Maxine uh, what is in 2.114. So this is a very special type of chat because it's focused on documents. It's not very, it's not an avoid like uh, you would use something like Slack. Uh, people are talking all over the place. They create these channels, but it's very hard actually to follow and focus on a particular topic. And I think documents are, are the perfect way to focus. So you should only talk on documents on knowledge, on the knowledge of your company. I agree. Yeah. I don't want to focus too much on the chat because it's a newer thing for us and uh, it's not very polished, I would say, uh, right now. It doesn't have threads or it doesn't have uh, uh, very, a lot of uh, formatting. Of course, it does some. You can format stuff before you send it, but you cannot uh, delete uh, chat messages and you cannot edit them. So it's not a polished experience, but th this is something I wanted to show to the PitchCrown community that is very cool and we can do this in house. And maybe soon in a couple of months or maybe one year, you're gonna have to, you're, you're gonna be able to quit everything else and do everything in house in, in, in our tree. So you mentioned that there's a Slack integration. Can you show us how to set that up? Sure. So in the workspace settings, you're going to see here the integrations. And we have Google SSO where we can log in with, uh, you can log in with your Google account, not going have to, not going have to, not having to go through the whole onboarding where you set your profile picture and stuff like that. Right. We have Slack SSO, but we also have the Slack activity bot and the uh, search command. And uh, let me remove this one and connect it again so you can see how this works. So basically, it's right, redirecting you to Slack. Then you can select a channel and just allow it. And it's that simple. You're going to have a channel that uh, you're going to be able to receive events from the workspace in. So. Let me show you how this works actually. I'm gonna start Slack. Not sure if you can see the, the window. I can see it. Yeah, this is how it looks like. You're gonna be seeing uh, events from, um, you're gonna be seeing ev events from your workspace in RGB and Slack. You can also search from here. You can say RGB find. You can type your query and it's gonna bring up uh, something. So this was the uh, talk about the editor, right? And we talked about how it lets you enter text and format it with great options, it lets you add architecture diagrams and API docs and change logs and mini taskers and maps and lots more stuff coming. So this is the editor. It's a very enjoyable experience. And we've talked about the document tree that's very arrangeable. And at the beginning, I mentioned you have these document spaces. So document spaces are here because one main purpose, because we wanted you to be able to share multiple documents with the outside world. So each one of these spaces are shareable with outside world. You can either copy this uh, RGB link and you can just paste it and just want to show you how it looks like. So this is the RGB roadmap that you can also find here on the no, I lost your audio again. It sounds like your mic uh, had like a blowout. Oh, there you go. I might be keeping my hands on on where the mic is, but let's see. Is it cool now? Yeah, it's good now. 
Okay, I'm gonna try, try to keep my hands off the keyboard because it might be blocking the mic. So this is the roadmap for this is the roadmap for ArchB, and it's implemented in ArchB, and it has this uh, this structure that you see here. So, but you can also see it's hosted on roadmap.archb.io using the hosting feature. You can just see we can uh, host it on your own domain and generate SSL certificates and you will benefit from the same SLA that we give you. That's 99.95. So you have SSL, you have uh, hosted documentation. And actually, I want to show you something really cool. If you go on the website, and you go to our uh, product, uh, product documentation, you're gonna notice it's self-hosted. So our knowledge base is self-hosted by our own software. Nice. So that's an easy way for someone to demo the product. Yeah, it's a very easy way to demo the product. It's like a book, you can just scroll through it. As you can see here, the document tree that I showed you before, it's yeah. very flexible and you can arrange content in any way you want to. So how many times can you nest uh, content? As you see here under like emoji, you're like the second yeah. uh, level in. How many levels can you put into uh, a document? We don't have a limit yet, but I, my opinion is that when you go like like something like over ten nesting, it's gonna look funky in here. Okay. We don't have a limit yet because we wanted to see how far people would take it. Gotcha. Uh, we have another question coming in from uh, Vinny. He wants to know if you have an Android app or is there any app in the pipeline? No, it's, uh, we, don't, we don't have it yet, but if we look in the, in the roadmap, we have the desktop apps and the mob, mobile apps coming soon in, uh, in Q3 and Q4 2020. Before nice. this, we're, we're also going to make an experiment with uh, progressive web apps and see how people are responding to that. So progressive web apps are a way of building native apps without having to build them. For example, uh, you see uh, all these apps here, they are downloaded and uh, they are in the local uh, drive. But there's a new type of apps that are called uh, progressive web apps that they can be here uh, without you installing them because they're going to appear here uh, a small plus sign and you're going to be able to install them. So we're going to, and it, the uh, PWAs also work on mobile. So before we started with this, we're, we're also going to uh, make a small experiment and see if progressive web apps uh, are enough for, for most people. So I hope that answers the question. So we've talked about how uh, you can host actual spaces for, or on your own domain or sh share them with your customers, share them with, your, with the users of your product, share them with your customers. If you have an agency, you might need uh, multiple spaces to share with each of your customers. Uh, you, can, you can do this very easily. Well, uh, so we have docs.archb.io uh, self-hosted, roadmap is self-hosted, a uh, lot of stuff here is self-hosted. For example, the templates that you see here are coming from this space that we maintain. This is, this is the, the master workspace, I would say so. But also, um, if we look in the, in the blog section, so if we go archb.io slash blog, you see our blogs here, and they are powered by the editor, actually. <laughs> this is one of my guilty pleasures as an engineer. I wanted to build anything with it, because uh, the concept of, concept of dog fooding. Dog fooding allows you to use your own software, and you improve it, because you see how it, you see how painful it is to use it sometimes. And when you don't use your own software, it's probably not very good. <laughs> so this blog is coming from this actual space. 
we cannot do this right now, but we are doing this internally because uh, we can and wanted to make our software better. So these are the spaces. It's very easy to search within it. The search is very fast. You can search and find the results here and just one click it takes you where you need to go. But also you can see, uh, you can search by team tags and you can search by latest uh, searches from your team. So reaching information is also very simple. You can write information, but also reaching and structuring and finding the where information is, is very simple. We also have the templates. Oh, we, uh, we lost your mic again. How about now? Yep, that's good. So whatever you just did. Yeah. <laughs> So we figured it out. It's uh, it's me doing it. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question. So in the documents section, can we color code those uh, documents? Uh, yes, you can. So let's find a very long document. So let's say we want to make this uh, text a different color. This is how you do it. Cool. Very simple. It's a uh, it's a good way to pop up something. Highlight yeah, highlight important information. Yeah. So I want to talk to, uh, a bit. If there's no other question. Uh, no questions for now. But I'm sure okay. more users will uh, jump on board and ask questions as they watch. Yeah, I want to talk a bit about templates because most companies have uh, some type of templates that they use for more stuff. For example, onboarding a new customer or onboarding a new uh, teammate. Uh, they might have to check off some stuff. Did you go to get, get your MacBook or your laptop? Check that off. Uh, did you talk to your project manager? Check that off. Uh, so we have these uh, system level templates that uh, companies use, but we also have custom templates. So in the template space, you can create templates here and in whatever space you are, you're gonna be able to start from those. So it's a very simple and very fast experience uh, trying to create these documents. You, if, if you set up things correctly for your company, uh, this, this is the only software that is gonna get completely out, completely out of your way to, to document stuff. We also have the archives. When you are not sure if you want to completely delete something, you can archive it. Uh, you can also clone uh, documents. You can also clone with uh, all its children. If you have a big nesting, you can clone all of it. Oh wow! And in the same uh, in the same space, which you can see here, uh, I think this illustrates it better. So docs.archv.io has two versions. This was the version that we had until uh, two months ago when uh, I decided to rewrite it. And this is the version that it's currently available. And what's interesting about it is that the, the new version is not uh, started from scratch. It's, it's a fork of the, of the last uh, documentation. So, <laughs> I want to show you this really cool feature. If you go to docs.archv.io, you're also going to be able to see the last version of the documentation. You just switch it here. So how many revisions can somebody have? We don't have a limit so far, but we, we uh, we're pretty young. So we launched uh, mid last year. And we haven't seen anybody create more than three of them. So we don't have a limit so far, but we're probably going to set one as we advance and get more customers, bigger customers. And we're going to see what the, what the acceptable limit is there. Awesome. So for those of you guys joining us now, we actually have the deal live. All you have to go uh, is pitchground.com slash products slash Archbee, and you'll be able to buy the deal right away. And it's an unbelievable price. Like, 
I was actually just looking at the price right now. I haven't even seen the <laughs> sales page myself, but I just hopped on. I'm like, wow, this is such a steal uh, because there's so much, so many other, I guess you can say competitors out there that don't even offer anywhere near the level of documentation that Archby has. Um, personally, yeah. I'm going to buy a copy of this myself because I right now hop between Slack, Asana, and Google Docs. And I could definitely just switch to this one platform and have everything consolidated. And there's going to be so many use cases for it. And if you guys are interested, maybe I'll even do a demo sometime this week of how I'm going to implement uh, Archbeat in my business. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you guys are joining us and you guys have questions about Archbeat, maybe you already tried a demo of the product, you signed up for a trial account, and you're uh, maybe confused about how to set up a certain integration, this is the time to ask. Uh, Dragos is going to be here uh, for the next 20 minutes to continue answering questions. Uh, we are here for you. We're here to serve you. We're here to help you make the best out of your business documentation. So if you, if you guys have questions, feel free to drop them below. I'm going to give the floor back to Dragos. Yeah. Uh, let's continue with uh, importing stuff because sometimes you already have some current existing documentation somewhere. You can also import that documentation in Markdown or uh, DocX formats. Uh, recently, we've got uh, many other requests and we're trying to see uh, which will give us the best impact and see if the people want to import for, from Confluence and from some of our competitors. And we're trying to decide what to build first because we want to provide the, the best value and not uh, force people to just copy and paste everything. Uh, we also have uh, great exporting stuff. For example, you can uh, export in Markdown or PDF. You can uh, you can see a table of content here. Let me uh, let me find something uh, with more uh, with more headings because the table of content is based on uh, is based on headings, and it's automatically generated. So I think this is a great. Uh, this is a great document that you can see the table of content here. So can you open, uh, can you export a PDF and then show us the end result of that PDF? Yes, I can. Uh, let's do this one. It takes a while because there are some images and multiple stuff. So this is how it looks like. It's, uh, it's almost per pixel perfect. Wow, so clean. Yeah. We also have the option if you want to have, uh, let me turn this off. If you want to have uh, meta information about the document, you just click the other button and you're going to see the meta information on the first page and then all the stuff is going to be here. So it looks almost identical. You can see everybody who has contributed to this document. What else? Uh, sometimes you want to just ping somebody from your team with this document. You, you think they might need to read it or uh, they are somebody new and they're asking about how to set up their Wi-Fi password or um, where is the administrator located so, can, so they can get their badge or I don't know, maybe they also need to see the software architecture for the whole system because it has multiple components that work together to form the, your whole business. So you can just open this menu here and just ping them. And they're gonna, they're gonna receive an email or a Slack notification if you, if the, if you are uh, having the Slack, Slack integration uh, enabled. Yeah, so like I said, it's a very fast system, very flexible. You can use it, use it multiple ways. Uh, we've seen uh, companies use it from uh, team wikis to project documentation to knowledge bases, the uh, internal notes, personal notes. We've seen CEOs organize their thoughts and uh, structure their day with mini taskers and uh, uh, checklists, small checklists like this. Uh, you can also mention people in the checklist. 
So we're not we're not trying to go into the project management space. That's a different ballpark, but you can all, always break up uh, bigger tasks and and smaller tasks and organize yourself and share that with your team. So with these checklists, is that interactive? So like, can someone actually check that off? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I thought this was obvious. <laughs> okay. It would make no sense to, right. to not be interactive. Everything is interactive in here. Uh, what else? We've made it so, uh, so easy to get stuff done and see, for example, what your company and your teammates have been doing. Uh, invite your team to set up payment and uh, maybe refer somebody else and get uh, bonus, uh, bonus dollars on your account for it. Uh, it's very easy to just uh, tweet about us I urge you to do it. Uh, we are actually the one of the main reasons where we're doing the pitch ground launch, not because because of the money. We just feel we have really great software that very few people know about. And this year is going to be the year where we step on the marketing and let more people know. And pitch ground is the first step in that. So thank you guys for uh, having us launching with uh, pitch ground and. I feel this is an amazing uh, community after the responses we got from people coming in our uh, chat app here. Totally. We actually have somebody joining in now and they said, uh, they asked what is a workspace. So they're looking at the deal page uh, and they want to know what is considered a workspace. Sure. So workspaces, because we've had in the past a couple of uh, big customers that uh, they were business owners in a couple of businesses and they wanted to separate their workspaces and until then they had to have multiple accounts and they had to log in and log out each time they wanted to uh, be part of different businesses. This also works for you personally. For example, if you're employed in a company but you're also doing your own thing uh, as a side gig or uh, you're trying to start a company on in your free time, uh, workspaces are a way to do that. Be also in the in your uh, company's workspace and be in another workspace. As you can see here, uh, Air Labs is, uh, is my company and these are some mock accounts because I, we have some, some employees with not very many. And uh, this is another workspace where I'm alone. You can also create another workspace. And you can add other people here. So these are workspaces, are a way to change your, uh, change the workspace you're working with without having to log in and log out. Just a single account, account for multiple workspaces. So if I wanted to be in Air Labs, I, I just click on it. If I wanted to be in ETH, I just click on it and everything is going to be from that account. As you can see here, my notes and drafts are still available, but the other spaces from ETH are not here. Uh, from our Air Labs are not here because I've switched the workspace. So let's switch back to Air Labs and you're going to see the, the whole uh, shebang of things we are currently doing internally. Nice. Yeah. Let me show you other stuff that we're using. So we're in using this for everything we can internally so we can always make it better. These are some checklists that I on the other day. Uh, you have some emails here, for example, uh, onboarding emails for customers. Uh, template like I said, blog ideas. The blogs are in here, outreach, when, uh, for example, multiple companies have the sales scripts that they want to contact other companies to get them as a client or a customer, and they have these sales scripts. Of course, it's better so you can customize them, but some parts are uh, the same for each email, so we also do this in here. A uh, couple of months back, uh, I pitched a big, uh, big corporation from Europe, a big bank, and 
I uh, actually went to the whole presentation with 25 people in, in the meeting and I showed them the, the, this exact space and they were, they were amazed by uh, how uh, I was using my own software to pitch them. So, like I said, I'm actually using this for whatever stuff I can internally. Very nice. What else can I show you here? Um, integrations, we talked about this profile, photos. Um, it's a very simple, very fast and uh, flexible experience. So we have another question regarding our uh, sales uh, page. So they're asking about the add-on pack now. So with the add-on pack, does it mean you can allocate the users across multiple workspaces? So let's say they get the, the initial deal, one, one code, and they okay. get the add-on, which gives them a total of 15 total team members. Can it be allocated across the two workspaces in that instance? Uh, no, that's not possible. So you, you, you can add uh, a main discount code uh, for one workspace. If you want to have two workspaces, you will need to buy two main coupons. And the add-ons are, so let me show you the, where you can uh, input this. So where, where you're in the section of subscription of payment, you can add the code here. And it's going to add the code to the workspace you have currently selected. If you want to have multiple uh, workspaces, you will need to buy multiple main codes. And add-ons, you can add as many as you want. For example, uh, in works in Air Labs, you might add one main code and ten uh, add-ons if you have a team of uh, sixty people. So it's ten from the main and uh, uh, fifty from the add-ons, and that that makes sixty. So I hope that I, uh, I I stumbled a bit. So I hope I answered you and you understood what I wanted to say. If you want me, I can repeat it. In a more uh, that way. was that was good. Let's talk a bit a bit about the roadmap. I think this is one of the things that. Uh, lets people know where we're going to go from here because uh, it's very important when you buy into SaaS, you are in it for, for the long haul and you need to know where the company is going to be headed and where the product is going to be headed. So as you see here, we've talked a bit uh, before about the desktop apps and mo mobile apps. Uh, we want to be able to split blocks vertically so you can have uh, for example, split blocks here and custom CSS here and, and, uh, and separated by two things. You also want to have custom CSS and JavaScript for public spaces. So public spaces currently have this ability of adding uh, intercom integration or Google Analytics. But we have, uh, we have received a variety of requests from people that have different systems. They might have a heat map, uh, heat or uh, I don't know, mix panel or uh, help crunch for their customer support. And they will need custom JavaScript implemented with Intercom, of course, is the most famous and one of the first to do this. And uh, our couple of first batches of customers have asked this uh, for themselves and we have built it. But soon with custom JavaScript and in CSS, you're going to be able to customize everything, not only how it looks, but also what scripts it loads. Uh, we also heard the feedback that uh, public spaces need to collect feedback. For example, you might have a small box here that uh, your customers are going to be able to enter some text and other stuff to let you know that you can improve this stuff and how you can improve this stuff. Zapier integration. This is, uh, this is one of the main things we want to do because sometimes we want to create documents automatically. So you might have a build system or you might have a, 
a marketing system that sends some stuff regularly and you want to aggregate that stuff once a week to create a document in a, in a public space or in an internal space. And Zapier helps you do that. And also connect to uh, web hooks like, uh, for example, you might have a pipe drive or some CRM that your salespeople are using. Uh, they are great for inputting stuff and uh, dragging tasks and stuff, but they are not always good for sharing knowledge between the salespeople. So you might use the Zapier integration to make sure the two systems uh, work together beautifully. Uh, Asana integration, this is uh, also one of the main things we wanna develop because as we get uh, more and bigger customers, we've seen that uh, what we already have like Trello and mini taskers are not working for them as their, their team is too big and they're using specialized software like Asana and Jira. So we're gonna build integrations for that too. Uh, Google Drive integration is gonna be here and you're gonna be able to embed any document or sheet or presentation from Google in, a, in an RHP app. Also GitHub integration. Uh, GitHub uh, integration will work the, uh, the specific way. Uh, engineers would like to write Markdown and they would like to sync the space with other teams uh, so they would not have to repeat the documentation in their Git repositories. So soon you'll have another tab here that will say enable GitHub integration and uh, the system is going to look for that repository in GitHub or another Git uh, provider and is gonna bring up the whole markdown and, and show them as RHP documents. We also have, uh, we already have Slack integration. The Microsoft Teams is already becoming uh, very strong and we're gonna have Microsoft Teams integration very soon. It's gonna work the same way as Slack. Okay. Uh, mind, uh, mind maps are, uh, we already have the, the diagrams that I showed you before. Let me show you again, maybe for people that were just joining in. So this is a diagram, a native diagram, and we're gonna have a variation of this that is gonna let you build mind maps. Uh, you know, the kind of mad mind maps that maybe designers use to uh, design pages and uh, uh, how things link together so they can organize their thoughts uh, more thoroughly. Yeah, this was the, the roadmap. Uh, if you go to roadmaps.rhp.io, uh, you're gonna see uh, a lot of stuff that we have shipped in uh, the previous months and what's in progress, like databases and dark mode for the workspace. This is, this is gonna be here very soon, dark mode. It's also going to be, uh, it's going to take the mode from your operating system. For example, if you have a dark mode here in your operating system, uh, RHP is going to know about it and going to have dark mode too. For example, in the night, when you have automatically dark mode, uh, it's going to switch too in the in RHP. So it's not going to bother your, your eyes. Your The blue light is going to come down and you're going to be able to sleep better. So yeah, uh, notifications, uh, this is a very thought out system, I would say. Any other questions for you guys? I'm checking for questions right now. Wow, lots of uh, lots of engagement in the in the chat app in the app. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were telling this. everyone just to sign up for a trial account um, to check it out. So you're definitely gonna have a lot more uh, uh, customer chat support.
So guys, if you if you ask a, a question in the in the drift, uh, can you ask it again here for everybody to hear it? Because I see at least fifteen or twenty questions in the drift chat. <laughs> Well, I can't see those questions, so maybe you can read a couple of those out loud. Sure. Let me see. Custom domain with CNAME support. What is that? So the question is, what is custom domain with CNAME support? So custom domain is when you want to share a space, and instead of uh, providing this link to your customers, you want to provide them a link on your own domain. For example, like this. So the same space is available at this RGB link or at this uh, on your own domain. Of course, this is our own domain because it's, uh, it's our own roadmap. But basically, it could be roadmap.richard.com. Yes, or anything. It's, it's not just a roadmap. So it's a full-fledged knowledge base. And usually people ask about C name, so that docs powered by Archbee can also be removed. Uh, there's a button that they can toggle uh, in the back end, correct? Uh, yes, let me show you that right now. So when, when you're here in the general space, you have a, a bunch of uh, check boxes. Uh, if, if the space is public, of course, uh, if uh, you want to have that public space uh, indexed by search engines, or if you want to show the RGB branding. So right now the RGB branding is on and what you see here are the docs powered by RGB. This is the RGB branding. But once you check that off and you refresh the page, you're going to see the, the, the branding has gone. So this is the white labeling that is mentioned, is mentioned in, the, uh, in the pitch ground launch page. So these are public spaces that you can share multiple documents. It reads like a book and you can share them with an RGB link on your own domain. Multiple options are available. Also, you can customize it. You can customize the colors in it. You can customize the logo. You can customize the links in here. Uh, these links, the colors here, the logo. It's very customizable. Let me read another question in the drift. Is there integration with Jira? Uh, it's it's in the works. Jira's uh, integration is going to be here uh, this year for sure. We're trying to make it in a Q3. Check out the roadmap at roadmap.archp.io. Another question is, do you have the Android app? Oh, I guess this is the- The same question, the, probably. <laughs> yeah, we answered the same, uh, the same questions. But we can answer that again for those of uh, new viewers joining us right yes. now. Yeah, so uh, Android app and iOS and uh, native uh, desktop apps are planned also this year, Q3 and Q4. But before that, we're gonna have a small experiment with uh, progressive web apps, which are not gonna, uh, require you to install apps and keep them updated and they're still going to show in your workspace for example here they're going to show in your uh, desktop as a shortcut and they're still going to work like web apps where they're going to be very easy to maintain to keep uh, updated and they're not going to be very taxing to your uh, hardware like your laptop because having multiple apps uh, open here is going to eat up your ram but Having another tab that's going to show up as a new app here is going to be just 1% more in, in the RAM, your Chrome or Safari or uh, Firefox is eating. So it's, it's going to be a triple win, in my opinion. 
if that works correctly. But like I said, it's, it's gonna be an experiment first to see if that works. And if it's still not ready, the technology is very new from Google and Apple and Microsoft. So if that, if that doesn't work, we're gonna release native apps for uh, iOS, for Android, for Mac OS, for Linux and Windows. Awesome. So we have one more question. Um, are there any storage limitations? So I guess they're referring to images, maybe video, maybe audio. Um, yeah. Uh, right now, no, there is no uh, limitation. Uh, the limitation is only when you are trying our suite on the free starting plan. But uh, pitch ground, uh, the pitch ground deals that you are going to buy are going to give you a scaling uh, scaling subscription for life. So you're not going to have any limitation in the amount of content you can add to, the, to your workspaces. Uh, I believe he's probably alluding to, are the images going to be hosted by Archby as well as maybe the video as well as the audio? Okay, so yeah, the, the images are going to be hosted by Archv. Uh The videos, no, we have integrations with YouTube and uh, Vimeo and stuff like that. So you're going to be, be able to put the videos in there and uh, you're going to be able to see them in Archv directly. And uh, let me see if we, if we have something there. Yeah, let's show them how quickly you can embed a video from YouTube, for example. Yeah, let's go to YouTube. Grab a link here. Something, something from Ted. I don't know if I copied that link. You just go here, add YouTube. And that's it. It's wow, right here. that's amazing. So that's five seconds. It also works the same with Vimeo, and we're gonna bring in even more stuff like uh, Vidyard and Loom because lots of people are using Loom and Vidyard to either make sales videos or make bugs videos for their software. Or even uh, collaborate as the remote culture is getting more stronger uh, with this virus coming on and everybody's going remote. Uh, it's going to be even more important that we have all these tools to collaborate with. That's awesome. Uh, so for those of you guys joining us now, we have so much content um, in this webinar. Make sure if you missed it, you can rewatch it later on as soon as this finishes. We're also open for Q&A right now for the next 10 minutes. So if you guys are demoing the product or you already purchased the product from our website, pitchground.com, uh, make sure you drop the questions in the comments so that way we can get them answered for you live. Yes. So something I want to announce, uh, we had recently announced the other day that we're going to give away five free beta licenses. So I'm just going to announce who they are. We're going to have Yash Shah. We're going to have Phil Wilson, Bruce Craft Jr., Justin Sturgis, and Amit Ugle. Or, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. Uh, but we're going to have you guys do our beta videos, and then we're going to send you free licenses for Archby for your contributions. These are 100% unbiased uh, reviews, whether you love it, whether you hate it. We just want to hear from you guys how you're using this product. So congratulations to you guys. I also sent you a message. Make sure you guys are checking your messages. If you guys are super private, unfortunately, uh, I was not able to select you as a winner, but make sure you guys change your privacy settings so that in the future I can select you. Uh, and I'm going to give the floor back to Dragos as I go through our comment section for more questions. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk a bit about the benefits of the software because I've showed you a bunch of features that you might not uh, understand how are useful to your company. Uh, basically, the whole narrative is around your company growing. When you're a couple of people in the beginning, two or three people, uh, it's very easy to have everything undocumented in, in your own heads, uh, and it's actually faster that way. 
that as you grow, uh, this kind of knowledge, which is called tribal knowledge, will bog your company down because you're going to have to repeat stuff and you're going to have to tell a bunch of people that are onboarding the same stuff. And uh, actually, they're not going to know the whole history and how you got there with your company and where you want to go. And onboarding people, is, it's a very huge uh, problem. And most companies, and uh, especially bigger ones, uh, have specialized in very expensive software for this exact purpose. Uh, onboarding can be easily solved if you move your uh, company culture to a documentation one and not a, a real-time chat one. Because there's basically two types of communication. It's asynchronous communication and synchronous communication. What we're taught to do and what we've been doing so far is synchronous communication. We hop on a call on Zoom or we talk face to face. And because most of the times that uh, interaction is one on one, that knowledge that gets created and uh, created and structured in that conversation will not be available to the next person to read or to know of. And asynchronous communication or written down knowledge is a huge tool that can help you grow your team from a couple of people to 10 people and then from 10 to 20 and then the next level 20 to 100. Uh, this culture of writing stuff down and documenting your everything from playbooks to onboarding to brainstorms to meeting notes to API docs to know-how for your company is going to help you scale a lot faster and build a, a more robust company that uh, works faster and is more productive in the long run. Uh, what are some of the use cases we've seen for, for teams are uh, constructing a team wiki or uh, building a great knowledge base internally or for your customers that might not know how to use your products or your services efficiently. Uh, we've saw we've seen technical teams build project documentation and pass it on for their customers for their APIs or uh, even more advanced stuff like change logs. We've seen people take notes for themselves or uh, for their team or meeting notes or technical notes, even executives structuring down down their thoughts. Uh, these are some of the benefits, I say, uh, from using software like this. And as the remote culture becomes even more embedded and advanced in our societies and how we work, uh, this is going to be even more crucial than it is today. Newer type companies will benefit a lot from using software like ArchB. And even our competitors are doing great on this front. That's awesome. Uh, it's, you know, it's one of the best products I've seen in the product documentation space so far. And I've worked with so many different companies. Uh, I do consulting on the side and I help a lot of SMBs or small and medium sized businesses grow and scale. And one of their biggest challenges is exactly what ArchB solves the ability to document create onboarding, create wikis and knowledge bases for the public facing uh, side of the business. So it is so, so powerful to have such a tool like this in your arsenal. So if you're on the fence, make sure you guys try out the product. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Uh, we also have another question. Uh, what's your privacy policy? Can you see your user's notes on your side? So it's two different questions. Can I what? Uh, what is your privacy policy? Okay. And then what, um, can you see your user notes on your side? Uh, we cannot, at least without uh, some major work being done. So everything, your, the user data is encrypted in the database and even in transit. So we have encryption at rest and encryption in transit. So it's very hard for us to do it. But with your approval, if something goes wrong, we will ask for your approval and we're gonna be able to debug stuff. 
So we're never going to go into your workspace and look at what you're doing there. Only with, if something goes wrong and you need us to debug stuff, we're going to ask for your permission and only then look at it. Okay, and then uh, I guess with the privacy policy, he's asking about GPDR, he's asking about CPP, uh, CCPA. Uh, we are GDPR compliant, yes. I'm not sure, uh, what, what did you say last time? C uh, so CCPA is a, an American, it's very similar to GPDR. Okay. So if it's very similar, I guess the same requirements apply. So uh, we haven't done anything specific to be CCPA compliant, but we are already GDPR compliant. So it might just translate without us doing anything. Awesome. I hope that answers your question. You can go to, to the privacy policy on the website. We have everything described there. Okay, so I believe that will be our last question for our call today. Thank you for joining us for another wonderful webinar. We actually went over time, but I believe that the value was worth it. So that's why I just kept it going. Uh, we had a lot of people join us live and I can't wait to see how many more people watch this replay because uh, as you know, we have a global customer base and uh, it's a very exciting time for us to be able to add this type of value, especially in these unfortunate times where the coronavirus is spreading worldwide. A lot of people are being forced to stay home. And this again will be a tool that a lot of businesses, businesses can use to help streamline their operations, streamline their communications. And uh, hopefully other people see the value in this as well. I'm gonna be purchasing my uh, code right after this call because I wanna make sure I get one of the li limited lifetime deals. Um, and I hope that everyone else on this call gets to see that as well, see the value, see the opportunity to have a all-in-one system to not only have a knowledge base, but also have a uh, ultra fast wiki in their hands. So that ends my time for today with Dragos. Thank you for yours. We'll see you guys on our next call. Take care. Thank you guys. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you on the chat. Write to me anything you want. Uh, I'm happy to have a discussion and uh, fulfill any need you might need. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank see you. you.